For question 13, part B, from June 2017 IAL, um, we're now asked to hence solve this equation. Okay, now, um, basically what we've done is we've already proved that um, this can be expressed in this form here. So, in case you, you're not um, sure, okay, um, how to do this, how to express it in this form, there's no problem here. I mean, so supposing you couldn't do part A. Part A is worth four marks. Okay, don't give up. Okay, on part B. Part B, you might be able to do part B without knowing how to do part A. Okay, so don't just look at part A of a question. Oh, I can't do that. And then don't bother looking at the rest of the question. Just leave it and say, okay, I've, I've lost all those marks. No, there are six marks here that you could gain without doing part A because they've already told you to show that this... Uh, that something um, 5 cosine um, x plus 1 equals sine x tan x becomes this. So we can just uh, apply, okay, what we've just learned, okay, if, if, if 5 cosine x plus 1 equals sine x tan x gives you 6 cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1 equals 0, then this will also give you something similar in the same format. You just replace the x with 2 theta, that's all. So this can become... Okay, 6 times cosine squared 2 theta plus cosine 2 theta minus 1 equals 0. So we have to solve this equation, okay, and find what the values of theta are which um, satisfy this equation. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make it a bit uh, simpler. So let me say let, let y be cosine theta. If y equals cosine theta, then this becomes 6 times y squared. Remember, cosine squared 2 theta is the same as cosine 2 theta all squared. And this becomes y minus 1 equals 0. So this is something we're able to factorize. Okay, this is something we are able to, to factorize. Okay, we can split up the middle term into two parts. We can say, okay... Um, oh, the reason why I change it to from cosine theta to y just to make it a bit familiar and easier to deal with, and we don't have to keep writing down cosine two theta every, sorry, y equals cosine two theta, see, not theta. Okay, be careful about things like that. We don't have to keep writing cosine two theta everywhere. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to now factorize it, and we see two numbers that multiply to give you minus six and add to give you. Uh, 1 is 2 times 3. So it must be 6y squared. It has to be positive 3y because you have a positive sum. Minus 2y minus 1 equals 0. Those two numbers, when you add them together, you get exactly that. They're the same. And these two, um, these two, uh, when you, you know, you think about two numbers multiplied to give you minus six, that's right, and they add to give you one, that's right. Okay, good. So now we can take out the common factor, we can factorize by grouping. So we've got three y is common in the first pair, and you've got two y plus one, and you've got minus, there's nothing common, so you write one, and you end up with two y plus one equals zero. So you've got two y plus one times three y minus one equals zero. So now we basically have two solutions. Either y is equal to negative a half or y is equal to positive one third. Okay? Two y plus one is zero, y must be minus half, and three y minus one is zero, y must be a third. So we can say that cosine two theta can equal negative a half. And we can have another pair of solutions, cosine two theta Another set of solutions, cosine 2, th two theta equals one-third. Now, we've got to go back to our limits. They say, hence of, for limit um, theta between 0 up to, and not including 180. Okay. Now, we have to change this so it matches the angle we got. We've got the 2 theta, right? So we've got to change this to 2 theta. Well, that won't make an effect. That won't make, it, make an effect to the 0, but it will change this 180 to 360. So that means we've got to catch all of the angles between 0 and 360, okay, for when cosine theta equals negative a half. Now, always uh, we find the first angle by using our calculator. All right? So let's take the calculator and 
let's make sure it's in degree mode, it's in radian mode. Here we got to use degrees, okay, because um, they mentioned this in degrees. If this was in radians, then we'd have to give it in radians. Okay, so um, we're going to change it to degree mode. So I'll put, um, it says angle unit, so I'll press 2. I want degrees, so I'll press 1. So now it's in degree mode. See, there's a D showing now. So I'm going to put shift cosine of minus a half. So 2 theta, let's deal with this one first. So 2 theta is equal to shift cosine of negative a half. Okay, so we can have, the calculator will give us one value for this angle. It will give us one of the solutions. So you've got shift cosine of negative a half. Negative a half, negative 1, 0 0.5. Close the bracket. Now that will give us one of the solutions, which is 120 degrees. Because that's one of the solutions, and it's within our range. Okay. Now, with the cosine curve, the, there will be another angle, which gives us the same value of, you know, minus a half. The cosine of the angle will be minus a half. With, between 0 and 360, okay, and it's found by doing 360 minus the angle we've got. So if we do 360 minus 120, which is 240, 360 minus our 120 that we got before, that gives us 240. So these are two angles within the range, okay, of, um, you know, 0 to 360. Uh, I can find other angles which also share the same cosine, cosine ratio. Okay, remember the cosine curve looks like this. Which, whoops, what happened there? One second. Let's get this back. middle. Okay, the cosine curve, it has a kind of shape like this. Um, I'll just draw it down here so it's out of the way. The cosine curve has a shape like this between 0 and 360. Okay, it's symmetrical about 180. So we found at minus a half, it's 120. And there's another place over here which has exactly the same cosine ratio of negative a half. Okay, and that distance is the same as that distance, and this is 360. Okay, so 360 minus this distance is 120, that distance must also be 120. So for the cosine curve, symmetrical about 180, so to find, the calculator gives you one answer, that was a 120, shift cosine minus a half, and the shape of the curve will tell us the other answer. Okay, so you do 360 minus 120 gives you 240. So for the cosine curve, it's always the calculator answer and 360 minus that. And then we know that it repeats every 360 degrees. It continues repeating that same shape and it, it repeats every 360 degrees. So, for example, uh, this value, there'll be another place over here which has the same cosine ratio. And this value, there'll be another place over there Okay, which has the same cosine ratio. But however, those are outside of our range. The only two angles we need in our range are 120 and 240. There's no other angles within our range. So then we say, okay, so that means theta is equal to, we want theta, not 2 theta. You divide by 2, you get 60 and 120. Those are the solutions for that first part. Then we've got another part where cosine 2 theta, two theta equals a third. So again, we do the same thing. We say 2 theta is equal to, inverse cosine of one-third. So again, the calculator in degree mode will give us the answer for that. So we're going to do shift cosine of, this time it's going to be one-third, positive one-third. Okay, and the calculator will give us one of the answers, which is 70.529. I'll write it as um, a decimal, 70.529. 70, 70 Point five two nine. Okay, so we can see from our little diagram that it's it's going to be somewhere. Okay, um, when we start drawing over here, it's going to be somewhere over here. Seventy point five two nine. See, close on a third. It's going to be somewhere in this region here. It's positive. All right, and of course the same rule apply, applies to find the other angle. We do three sixty minus that. So we're going to take this angle. I'm going to do three sixty minus it. So three sixty. Take away our answer gives us 289.471, 289, 289.471. And if you add 360 to this and take away 360 from this for both of those, we will be 
outside of the range. Okay, it will take us to angles which are outside of our range, which is between three zero and three sixty for the double angle. Now to find the final answer, okay, to find the final answer, we have to now just divide these by two. So let me take the first one, um, divide it by two. Uh, 114.735 so remember the question says to one decimal place when appropriate so this will be 114.7 so this gives us 114.7 degrees and for 70.529 okay you can just do that 70.529 divided by 2 and that gives us 35.3 degrees, 35.3, 35.3 degrees. And here we have our four solutions to this question. I hope that was clear. So for cosine, shift cosine, answer, that, that, that's one of the answers. Then 360 minus, that gives you your other answer, okay? And then from those two, you can generate any other solutions by adding and subtracting 362 and from those solutions, and you know, as long as they're inside the range. In this case, they weren't. Okay? For sine, it will be the calculator shift sine of the ratio gives you one answer, and it's 180 minus that for the other angle for sine, because the sine curve is symmetrical about 90 degrees. And then from those two angles, again, you can generate other solutions because it repeats every 360 degrees. And for tangent, that's a lot simpler. Just shift, tan, boom, your answer. The tan curve just repeats every 180. So you just keep adding 180 and subtracting 180 to that angle that you calculate. It gives you as long as you're within the range and you get all your solutions. Okay, so we'll see some more examples of these hopefully as we answer more questions. Thank you for paying attention. attention.